Yes, we do. We got Phoenix sports executive Jerry Colangelo on the line. And as we all know, John McCain, big sports fan. Who better to talk to us a little bit about his love of sports than Jerry Colangelo? Hey, Jerry. How are you? I'm good. We're good. We're, we've, we've been better, but uh, we appreciate you joining course, us this evening. Of course. What will you most uh, miss about John McCain, Jerry? Because I know you had a, a close relationship with him. Well, you, you just said it. The relationship that goes back <clears throat> many, many years that transcends uh, the world of sports. Uh, he was a friend. He was uh, a great leader. He was someone that we all depended on, especially people in Arizona. And as we were trying to build the city and build a state in so many different ways, we needed leadership from from our people who were representing us in Washington. And, and John McCain was the go-to guy. He was the one who took the lead and was supportive, and we could always count on him. And the relationship grew over the years, and my respect for him grew even more so. Obviously, being the war hero that he, that he was and uh, spending the time at the Hanoi Hilton and his story of his life is is how books are written and of course there have been many written about his life and so he's going to be sorely missed in terms of um, a voice in congress that uh, is badly needed especially when we are so split in the country today with uh, the two-party system um, john made great contributions to the country to the state and uh, but more importantly to me, his relationship to me as a friend, <clears throat> my respect for him as a family man uh, takes precedence. Uh, Mr. Colangelo, Bram Resnick here. Uh, you've made your own imprint on Phoenix, Arizona over the last half century. Uh, can you tell us about the first time you met John McCain, what you made of the man? Yeah, we were both a lot younger. I will start with that. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, it was pretty evident to me he had uh, terrific leadership qualities and that he was going to go somewhere. And when he decided to run for political office, um, he was a dynamo. You know, he was ready to go. So I've been a supporter. Uh, I was a supporter of him from the beginning um, because there are times when you can just see leadership oozing out of people. And, and in my opinion, uh, that's what John looked like to me. And he's so associated now with national and international politics, but he was a, a good local senator, as you pointed out. Where, where do we see his imprint uh, in Phoenix? Where did he provide some real, or Arizona, where did he provide some real needed assistance? Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. You, we talk about building uh, the city, the state, etc. So issues like the... Uh, uh, convention center, the light rail system, the transportation system, the water system. I mean, he was there. He was involved. We had to go to him for a lot of support because that's how the system is run. And uh, John was someone you could absolutely rely on because his word was his bond. And I related to that in spades. And that's because he, he really was committed to uh, to the people of the state of Arizona. Jerry, it's uh, it's Mark Curtis, and I, I'm just wondering, as as a longtime Arizonan, um, both yourself and John McCain, I, I think there's there are certain traits that that the people that we recognize as iconic Arizonans, um, and I mean that when when I say that about both of you. What, what some of the commonalities would be when, when you think about John McCain and, and the word maverick immediately comes to mind. And, and people have a lot of different connotations of the word maverick, but I, I think that fit John to a T, his ability to, to reach across the aisle. Um, and, and I think back famously to his correcting uh, one of his supporters during his run for president when she sort of denigrated Barack Obama and, and called him an Arab and he corrected her. It's something that's, that's not often seen in politics, certainly not now. So when, when you think about Arizonans and the word maverick, what comes to mind when you, when you think about John McCain? Well, just because of his track record and, and who he was as an individual, um, I'll call him a risk, he was a risk taker 
but it was guarded. It was selective. Um, he became a very astute politician in terms of understanding the system and getting things done. I, I remember having lunches with him over the years in the Senate dining hall in Washington, D.C., and the respect that he that he garnered just with fellow uh, senators and and uh, my meeting many of them, you could just see in the, the look in their eyes how they respected uh, our own Senator John McCain. And so, you know, over a period of years, you can just imagine the equity that is built up uh, in terms of being able to get the, a mission accomplished. And he was, if he was committed to something, he was going to see it through. That was just how he was made. And, yeah. and, and you have to have some of those, those battle scars. I, I've heard many people, including uh, Bram, who I'm sitting here with now, um, refer to him as, as a lion of the Senate. And, and old lions have battle scars, right? Oh, for sure. I think anyone who can survive the politi in the political world today, um, and you look at lasting for whatever number of years, whether it's 15 or 20 or 25 or more, that's incredible in the first place because it's a war. It's a daily war, just trying to get your message out, trying to get things done, um, which is the biggest difficulty we have today getting things done in Washington, D.C. And, and uh, I'm, I'm getting into this a little bit late, and so pardon me if, if um, uh, Rachel and Bram have already talked to you about this, but he also was very big, uh, certainly as you were, and maybe you all had a chance to work side by side when it comes to the, the sports landscape of Arizona and Phoenix in particular. Oh, for sure. Um, John was a great, uh, a great fan of, of professional sports and obviously, you know, the sports that I, you know, lived with and uh, spent my, my lifetime with, he was right there. And, you know, he was a fixture at Suns games whenever he was in town, not in Washington, D.C. He was sitting on the court in the corner of the floor uh, on the Suns side of the uh, opposite the Suns bench. And I would be sitting in the eighth row behind the Suns bench. And there was just view of the McCain sitting there. That was part of the, uh, the culture. That was part of the, uh, the whole scene at the, at the uh, old America West Arena. I guess we have to call it the old America right. West Arena now. Right. And then secondly, the times during the baseball seasons and the, the year that we win the World Series and John being in New York and being in Phoenix and being right there with us side by side was a great memory for me. You know, uh, Jerry, I remember when we came back to New York in the World Series against yes. the Yankees, Diamondbacks, and, and, and it was really just uh, days after the 9-11, the terrible tragedy, and, and we all, with the Diamondbacks team, went to ground zero, and, and John McCain was there. and. Um, it, yep. it meant something even more. Of course. Uh, the, the sight of, of having John there, you there, the, the players uh, paying this respect. And at the same time, if you think back, America had this feeling that uh, somehow baseball, at that point, the Diamondbacks and the Yankees will forever be linked to that terrible tragedy in America, but also the beginning of the healing process. Yes. Uh, yes to everything you just said, Mark. Um, it was a a moment uh, in time that how could anyone who's was around or associated could ever forget uh, for us to be right in the middle of all of that uh, we needed the kind of support and leadership um, that a John McCain could offer uh, the rest of us at that given time and he he certainly performed all right, Jerry Colangelo on the phone for us tonight as Team 12 continues to cover this breaking news. Jerry, thanks. About Senator John okay, McCain. you're welcome. Thank you very much. And you know, the Arizona Cardinals tweeting out their thoughts and prayers with the McCain family. Obviously, he spent some time at Cards Camp in years past. And Team 12's Cameron Cox really highlights his influence on sports as we were just talking about with Jerry. Take a look. He is Arizona's first fan because he was always there. Discussion right. continues. Oh, he's just saying, leave me alone, Gonzo. Loyal to anything and everything Arizona, 
no matter the venue. I've not seen anybody take control of a basketball game as consistently as Steve Nash has. And when it came to smack talk, he could sure hold his own. I hear that some guys on your staff uh, are not giving the Cardinals the credit mm. that they deserve, so you guys are dummies. Sports wasn't just a hobby for Arizona Senator John McCain. It was a passion, and he didn't shy away from showing it. The son of a naval officer, McCain moved around a lot growing up. The name on the school was always changing, but sports was the constant in life. In high school, he played tennis, football, and wrestled. But according to him, not very well. In high school, I played everything uh, mediocre, <laughs> but I loved playing football, and being mediocre then made me idolize the Carson's Palmers and the Larry Fitzgeralds of this world. You know, some say American politicians are defined by the sports they favor. For McCain, it's no surprise his sport was boxing. From his days as a light heavyweight in the Navy to being the guy delivering the knockout punch for the sport on a national stage. I can remember the golden days of boxing. McCain helped pass the Professional Boxing Safety Act in 1996. He co-authored the Ali Act which protects the rights and welfare of boxers. For almost two decades, he pushed for a sitting president to pardon boxing great Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champ who was sentenced to prison in 1912 for dating a white woman. This May, it finally happened. I've issued an executive grant of clemency, a full pardon posthumously to John Arthur Jack Johnson. His sports agenda was so long his government website even had a page dedicated to sports issues. If you could change one thing in sports, what would it be? I'd take significant action to prevent the spread and use of performance enhancing substances. McCain believed the fight not joined is a fight not enjoyed. He even credited his boxing training as one reason he was able to withstand torture during the five and a half years as a prisoner of war in Vietnam. What helped him and other prisoners get their mind off the situation? Sports talk. Then we got in some new prisoners and they were in a different part of the camp we were in. So we would tap on the wall. The first thing we wanted to know was the sports. And of course, the topic at that time was the uh, incredible feat by Joe Namath. McCain is an American hero, but some of his heroes include athletes from Hall of Fame baseball player Ted Williams. I idolized him. To Pat Tillman. You will see him again when a loving God reunites us all with the loved ones who preceded us in death. And of course, Larry Fitzgerald. These people are model citizens. And so in my view, they're heroes, not only on the field, but, but also off. Over the years, the Senator was a regular at Cardinals practices and games. Here he was just a month after being diagnosed with brain cancer in August 2017. God bless him. I mean, I love Senator McCain, and uh, one of my greatest treasures was having him stand next to me for the national anthem for a game. And, uh, you know, if anybody can whip it, he can. He's the toughest son of a gun I know. But it's his friendship with another Arizona icon that really spoke volumes, and that was never more evident than on Christmas Day in 2017. You know, it's such a great respect for him. You know, he's one of the great American Patriots um, and, you know, a Cardinals fan and a, and a friend. Fitzgerald paying tribute to McCain with a Christmas editorial in Sports Illustrated, saying, as soon as my boys are of age, I'll tell them stories about the quality of the man I've gotten to know. I'll tell them Senator John McCain will be revered and respected as long as the United States of America has a place in this world and his legacy will outlive all of us. He's a special person and um, you know we need him. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. But next time, Senator, remember to bring a glove. You know, it's he interesting. almost had it. Yeah, yeah. It, it is interesting, and Jerry Colangelo was talking about it, that, that uh, John McCain, I think, understood that sports could be a great uniter, and he, and he was such a a tough son of a gun. I mean, you know, uh, not a great athlete, but a tough athlete. And sometimes 
you want the tough dog in the fight. And, and sometimes it's not about athleticism, but more so about mental Will, toughness, right. which he had yeah. through and through up until this very day. I mean, there's no arguing that yeah. whatsoever through his whole life and every experience he had, whether it was on the field or off the field, the battlefield, what have you. Yeah. Unbelievable.